And does yeah. this this work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Further back? This? Okay. Hi, uh, I'm David. And I'm Neil. Uh, this is the usual update about the hyperscale sick activities we've been doing for a while at CentOS events. Let's get started. Uh, we will start with a quick recap of what the SIG is, what we do. We'll talk about the deliverables and what has been available. And we'll close with what's been new and what's been coming up. Uh, so the hyperscale SIG is a SIG within the CentOS project. It is focused on CentOS stream entirely. Uh, we only produce artifacts for stream. Um, mostly because nobody else volunteered to produce artifacts for RHEL. Uh, we are not opposed to doing that. Um, the goal of the Hyperscale SIG is to focus on enablement for large-scale infrastructure, uh, with large-scale loosely defined. It is mostly meant as a space for players from various uh, companies and areas within the CentOS space to come together and collaborate on tooling and packaging uh, and things around this space. Uh, we have found that over the years, if you run CentOS in production uh, in, in like Any a non-tiny environment, uh, yeah. you often end up having to kind of everybody ends up reinventing the same types of wheels. So there is value in doing this together in the same place so we can all work on it together and all make things better and work on more interesting things. And also by having this in-house development brought out into the open, it just makes everybody's life better. Um, this is not just limited to big companies. Uh, I happen to work for Meta, um, but this is by no means limited to big companies. Everybody's welcome to work in the SIG. We are also more than happy to use Hyperscale as kind of an incubator. People have ideas that they want to try out within the CentOS project, uh, but they don't feel like starting their own SIG just yet. We have done this before in a few, in a few cases, and it has worked well, and I would like to continue doing so if it is helpful. Uh, yeah. So. We established ourselves pretty shortly after uh, the, the transition to CentOS Stream as the primary focus um, in January of 21, with you know six of us founding it, with David and I uh, as part of the founding members. As of right now, we have 36 with it, with people in the queue, so it's steadily growing. Yep. Um, we have. Over the years, we originally started on IRC. We are now on Matrix, and we have you know a fancy Matrix room on the Fedora server, so yay. Um, we all have meetings bi-weekly. Thank you, Fedora Project, for having a way for us to do meetings on Matrix, because I really did not enjoy switching to IRC just for our meetings. Um, we also have monthly hackathons and video hangouts, so we try to have a little social aspect of it where we get to hang out and, and talk about what we're doing and, and, and meet with each other. And we do regular meetups. Well, we, we, it was a little bit too short notice for us to do it for this, but we kind of, um, if you're going to DevConf US next week, um, as part of the Fedora CentOS infrastructure people meetup thing that we do with the cloud users and whatever, Hyperscale is attached to that. So. Um, you know, come talk to us there about that stuff. And we do we do dedicated meetups as well, usually at CentOS oriented events. If you will be at Connect next year, uh, which is, I don't think this is announced, but it is usually co-located with FOSDEM, um, we will most likely do a meetup there. Um, we have documentation. Documentation is great. Uh, you can find our links from various things, uh, the charter for the SIG. Uh, we moved some of the stuff that used to be in the CentOS week in there as well for ease of access. Uh, we have user documentation that explains how to use the various artifacts we will talk about in a minute. Uh, we publish uh, activity reports for the SIG every quarter. Yes, yes every quarter-ish. Um, and, uh, and we have a list of previous talks that you can find there that are both about the SIG specifically and topics around it. Uh, we do project planning on Pagure. Uh, we have an issue tracker there where you can see things that people are interested in working on. Uh, it is sometimes updated, sometimes not, but mostly. We try. Yes, we at least try. Uh, okay, so what do we actually do? Uh, we, we will go over this uh, in a minute, but the idea we need to see is that we, we use the SIG to carry backwards of packages that want to be moving faster than what they are within CentOS Stream itself. We also track uh, packages that have uh, deviations in terms of policy and configuration. We leverage the SIG for doing large scale testing and enablement. And finally, we have things about the kernel, we have live DVD ISOs, and we have cloud images. Uh, let's talk about backports. Uh, backports is, I would say, the main and the largest deliverable that C produces right now. Uh, the idea here is that there are packages that, uh, these are meant to be dropping packages on a stock CentOS stream system. They shouldn't make the system worse. Ideally, they would make the system better, um, but they shouldn't cause any regression. Uh, these are things like systemd, uh, generally low-level system user space, but also things like there's an up-to-date copy of Vim, there's an up-to-date copy of Emacs. Um, it is kind of a grab bag of packages that members of the SIG have a personal interest in or that are needed and packages that we believe are going to be generally useful. 
Um, these are only built for x86, 64, and R64 because those are the only architectures we can test on. Uh, if anybody's a mainframe in a closet and would like to build this for S390 and test them on S390, be my guest. Uh, we would happily accept contributions. Uh, we, we have a palace of dependency. Um, my personal opinion is that uh, CentOS and CentOS Stream RL systems are not terribly useful unless one enables Appel to begin with. Um, so it seemed pointless to just not use Appel here. Uh, so we treat Appel and CRB as a hard dependency here. There's a long list of packages I'm not going to read through there, but you can see the tags there. We have started just doing builds for CentOS Stream 10 uh, last month, and we'll talk about 10 in a bit as well. Uh, but that's the latest things that we added. Michelle did a lot of work on Linux firmware um, that was actually worked on in Fedora that has been bubbling up. Uh, we worked on some cloud tooling, some tooling for um, uh, cluster management stuff like Slurm. Uh, and then like desktop utilities like Rdefined, for example. Uh, there is work in progress around OpenSSH. Uh, Meta happens to have a very extensive patch set on top of OpenSSH that we would really, really like to not maintain internally because it is very unpleasant. So while we work with OpenSSH upstream to get this upstream, we, we started putting it there. We don't do public builds of OpenSSH just yet, uh, but there are builds on CBS that you can try that just not tagged because I, I really don't trust unleashing this onto the world um, <laughs> just yet. But it is there if you want to play with it. There's also work going on on Kimo and virtualization. We'll talk about virtualization in a minute. Right. So we also do uh, we also do stuff around tracking and maintaining these package updates because when we um, diverge or build or fork or whatever you want to call it for a, an individual package, we try to have infrastructure in place to keep track of our upstream source and keep things continuously flowing. For example, um, you know, with uh, with uh, with Vim and Emacs and all yep. these other things, like we have to now know that we're tracking Fedora instead of CentOS Stream. Or in a case where like uh, um, OpenSSH, where we are actually tracking the CentOS version, but we're adding additional patches or whatever, right? They need to know that so that they can do the correct rebase yep. targets and stuff like that. So we we do all this stuff and and, it, and it, we have a tracker package updates which. The issues get automatically filed and tagged and all that stuff. Uh, it's our th thing that works in the OpenShift CI that we have somehow managed to make work. It uses the notifications that uh, the message bus that exists for the CentOS infrastructure. Yay, thank you for actually keeping that alive because it is very yes. hard to do this without that. Um, and we, we try to, we're, we're, we want to move towards a world where we can actually do less of it manually um, in terms of like, you know, trivial rebases, trivial merges should be things that we could be able to just have happen. And that's actually like some background stuff that we've been doing around realigning how we maintain the package sources to match Fedora uh, and also CentOS Stream now that they've switched to the disk it style has yep. made it a lot easier for us to start doing those sorts of things. And uh, Michelle yesterday gave a talk about his eBranch stuff and package depth graph, which is related to you know building this further out. And then there's gonna be more exciting stuff down the road for enabling that. Uh, if anybody here is good with OpenShift, we would not complain if somebody volunteered to help with this, because this is not yeah. our personal area of expertise, or at least not my personal area of expertise. Um, system D. So System D is one of the main um, and largest things, I would say, within our backboards. Uh, at Meta, uh, we do a lot of work with System D upstream, and we wanted a way to have the work we do upstream to be quickly available in production, but also generally, we really didn't want developers to have to work on a fork of System D. So within the SIG, we provide a backport of the very latest and shiny System D that is released upstream. Generally, we track the latest upstream and the latest upstream minus one. Right now, we're at 256, uh, which I believe is the latest. I don't think we put 257 out just yet. No, I think 257's uh, due out in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, we have builds for stream nine and, as of, and for stream 10 as of last month. Um, these are uh, meant to be dropping replacement from the ones in CentOS, uh, but because SystemD is a very wide and compassing project, they do have some significant differences that are worth calling out. Uh, for starters, this builds default to the um, CGP unified hierarchy, so they default to CGP2. That, because uh, that's that, also true in that the is true in 9, that was not true in 8, which yeah. is why the bullet was there, we should take it out. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, if you are still using CGP1 tangent, don't. don't. <laughs> it, it will. It should already be broken. If it isn't, it will start aggressively breaking very soon as various upstream point. projects drop support for it. Yeah, uh, also, it never actually worked in the first place. Yeah, so you're probably yeah, not you're in a good place. Um, we also ship system the UMD. Um, system the UMD, if you're not familiar with it, is an, um, it's a user space out of memory um, 
killer and tracker. The idea between Umdi is that Umdi can leverage some fancy kernel features like PSI, and it's able to kind of predict the future and tell, is my system about to um right before the kernel um killer comes along? And this is very helpful because if the kernel um killer comes along, it will indiscriminately kill some random project, maybe open SSH. That would be unpleasant. Maybe um, your text editor or your browser. Umdi can make informed decisions and um, so you can kill something more useful maybe. And uh, we have seen this being quite useful. We use this in production and meta, and it's generally, um, it, it's been in Fedora for quite a while now. Right, like if you, use, if you use Fedora Workstation or, or Fedora KDE, um, since Fedora 34, it has been in use as, and it, it is in the background just helping keep the system responsive by being intelligent about out of memory scenarios. Yep. Uh, we also ship the systemd networking daemons, we ship systemd networkd and systemd resolvd. We happen to use networkd uh, to run networking at meta instead of network manager, so that's, that's where the interest comes from. Um, it should work just fine. It, it won't be enabled by default um, on stock stream unless you turn it on, of course. Uh, but it, it works very well. I run it at home on my router as well. Uh, we also ship a few journal improvements that uh, came up upstream, mostly around cow optimization. Uh, there's a lot of work going on within systemd, in, like upstream in terms of making the journal more efficient. Um, and it's nice to have a lot of this work available downstream. Uh, all of this should theoretically also work with SLinux. Linux. Um, theoretically, because um, we at Meta do not run SLinux Linux in production, uh, and uh, most of the SLinux Linux enablement work is um, Dan or myself making stuff up and Neil yeah. advising us, because Neil actually knows SLinux. Linux. Yeah. Um, we so, have recently changed our strategy around this where we're, because now the SE Linux policy is available for public contribution, we're able to actually more make more targeted fixes. Yeah, and stuff I, like ideally that. we would like this to just be in the upstream policy, where upstream in this case is the Fedora or the CentOS stream policy or the RHEL policy. Um, this is a work in progress. If you care about SE Linux, use SE Linux and use this, uh, feedback will definitely be appreciated. I, uh, I, I am- is welcome. I am sure there's probably, because the scope of systemd is so wide, there is very likely some like corner demon that isn't widely used that might have some issues here. Um, but for normal like use cases, it should be fine. Um, more on systemd. So we do all the development in the open. There's a repo that you can see there. We are actually transitioning from just doing everything in the upstream systemd repo rather than using our own two-stage patches. Uh, I forgot if Dan, who's the main person doing work on It got retired that. last month. Oh, so. perfect. So we did ship that. That is excellent. Yeah, so uh, that got retired last month. Now we maintain everything. Any delta we have left is, is maintained as just patches. Great. Um, we have our repo on GitLab that we use for doing continuous integration. Um, this leverages GitLab pipeline, and it, it uses uh, under the Wilhelm MKOSI, which is another tool that's part of the systemd project. Uh, but it will, build, it will build the latest systemd um, and it will test it against them. We run the whole test suite. Systemd is a pretty comprehensive test suite. So we can have reasonable confidence that this is going to be fine. And if it's not fine, we can go to upstream and fix things. Uh, most of the time, I would say if issues come up here, there are issues related to changes upstream made, not things in Stentos and RHEL. Uh, rarely the opposite. Um, but yeah, and the idea is that we want to get a heads up whenever upstream makes changes, even on the latest upstream uh, tip, we want to get feedback on is this going to break down the road for us uh, so we do continuous rebuilds of the latest upstream git main uh, so that we can fix things as the release progresses and not just at the end. We would really like to have end-to-end -end testing for live systems. That's one thing we do not have now. Like what I would love to have personally is uh, build today's system, the boot it on a machine, check that the machine boots and like stress test a few things like open QA style. Um, we do not have this, but that is something I would love to have at some point. Uh, and there is documentation. This is very well documented. Um, this is the same documentation we use internally in Meta to onboard people that do work on this. Uh, but it should be hopefully helpful if somebody wants to contribute to these or contribute to systemd in general, I would say. Um, right. So uh, Davida said earlier that you know one of the things that we function as kind of a little bit of an incubator for other people to bring in interesting tech into the CentOS and, and the enterprise Linux ecosystem. This is one example of this where Intel worked with us in the CentOS Hyperscale uh, SIG to create a place for them to deploy these things. And we provided a tag, we provided uh, support and assistance for getting things done. And it got to a point where it was good enough that it eventually got merged back into core CentOS stream. And you know then we, we deprecated it. But like this is a good story of like, we, we helped people who were interested in doing something 
really cool with the technology that we have, and we enabled them through a combination of being nice people and having you know, the actual wherewithal and knowledge of how all the things work to help them succeed. Um, and Intel is also now a member of the ISA SIG, and is a lot more involved, I would say, within the Sandos project and within this ecosystem. Right. The ISA SIG spawned out more or less from this effort. Um, so, uh, we... Uh, wow. Sorry, I... What the hell? There we go. Um, as I said, we primarily target Stream 9. We have started doing work on Stream 10. Um, at Meta, we have started qualifying Stream 10, and I hope to start mass migrating the fleet November-ish, if everything goes well, but we will see. Um, and at least from a hyperscale perspective, I think our Stream 10 stuff is really going to start ramping up once Apple 10 is bootstrapped. E, that is correct, yes. Uh, we have one down Stream 8. Um, I don't think we have an official like retirement process for six stuff, but... We should just probably tell Fabian to kill it all. Yeah, we, we should figure out if we can like block the tags in CBS or something. Like the block content is still yeah, the content is still there, but we we're not gonna work on it. Um, uh, we it, question? Yeah, I just had a question. That, uh, Please. Uh, yes, uh, we only have that. Yeah, so you get to you get to have the moving mic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, as a, a rel GLBC maintainer, I just wanted to say. Uh, thank you for working with Intel and Hyperscaler SIG because there were a lot of changes that are otherwise very hard to test at scale in terms of performance in a core C library. And um, we worked with Intel after that, I think, to get much of the 80 patches that were being tested in the Hyperscaler SIG back into stream. So thank you for that. Um, now, it doesn't say it directly in the Hyperscaler SIG's charter about minimizing that kind of delta for core stream packages. Is it one of your goals to try to minimize the minimize the delta? I know for glibc it worked out really well that you were able to evaluate the perf of those patches that uh, Intel was contributing. Yes, we would like to do less work if possible. <laughs> and uh, yeah. but I, gen generally speaking, uh, we want to be as close to upstream at pos as possible, whatever the upstream is. So for packages that we back from Fedora, ideally we get all the changes back into Fedora. For packages that are based on the sources from stream or from rel, ideally we would like to get these changes merged into stream. There is no point in maintaining downward forks here. So some, some very, very quick backstory because I'm aware that we're running out of time. We've got to go through this quick. Um, when we first started the SIG, this was something that was kind of an ancillary thing that we thought about with Stream 8. Uh, within a year of all the Stream 8 stuff, it was such a chaotic mess that when we started going through Stream 9, when we started that bootstrap, Davida, Michelle, and I, we kind of sat down and, and decided a specific course for how we were going to do the Stream 9 stuff because it turned Stream 8 hyperscale turned into an unmaintainable mess. And so one of those was that. Um, the first question that has to be asked every time when we think about forking a package is, do we need to fork it? Or can we just send a, can we contribute it back to stream core? Um, the second question we have to ask is, is this modification something that can actually be split out? So if it's something like a, a configuration change, can we ship it as a configuration change as an auxiliary package rather than having to modify the core one? Some of the stuff that Meta originally did was before, for example, OpenSSH used to not have drop-in files for configuration, yep. that kind of stuff. Um, and then the last part is, is there something that needs to be changed in CentOS stream to support something that we do as a deviation? And so those are the hardest of the three kinds of things. And those are the ones that, you know, this is actually about right here, this slide. Yes. So we did a lot of upstream feature contributions. Um, myself, I, like I did like half of these bullets and then like Davida and Michelle did some of the other half. But like a big part of it was doing the enablement for these baseline system D features so that when we even ship a newer system D in our repository, there's some expected base level compatibility that we know that is being qualified within core CentOS stream so everything doesn't turn into a broken mess. Um, there's also things like being able to add uh, baseline uh, extensibility like the Nginx macros so that I could we could build um, third party Nginx modules for various use cases like I had a module that I needed to ship that allowed us to have Prometheus metrics for Nginx. And those are the kinds of things that were very difficult to actually make working. But once we did, we contributed to both Fedora and CentOS Stream. Uh, Pipewire, Gnome Wayland, all this, uh, you know, ETH tool, random stuff here and there was mostly to avoid having to fork all the things. Um, whenever we have to wind up permanently forking a package, it is a last resort option. And it also is an, uh, and, and at the point we have reached the conclusion 
that we can't get our fixes into the core stream for whatever reason, either unresponsiveness or difficulty of, of, of get conveyance or something else or timelines have just gotten too tight. Um, but every time we do a new stream version or every time we do this review, which we do like every six months or so when we meet up, um, we try to reconcile things and, and, and improve that because our goal is to provide you know, the uh, additive functionality that is fully compatible with the base platform. Um, that was a lot of work. We are very out of time, so I'm gonna go very quickly. Um, five minutes, yes. Um, we, the other thing we use the SIG for is the ability to do large scale testing. The main example here for a few years now has been the RPM copy on write stack. Um, the short version of this is that we have this patch set on top of RPM and DNF and the rest of the packaging stack to leverage features of modern file systems such as ButterFS uh, on copy on write to make package installations more efficient. Uh, because this isn't just a tiny patch, it is a fairly large thing. Uh, testing it involves having patched versions of uh, RPM and DNF and a few things. Uh, we ship this into a dedicated repo called Experimental uh, so that people can actually test it. We also happen to run these same packages in production at Meta, incidentally. Um, so there's also serves a dual purpose there. Uh, we would love to get this upstream in RPM at some point. We have been working with the RPM developers over the years to sh shape this into something that will be acceptable for upstream inclusion. That is still an in-progress effort. Uh, you can follow the history there. Yeah, so the kernel, um, originally we started out doing a derive kernel from CentOS Stream, and as part of that, we were contributing to the CentOS, to the RHEL kernel tree to support our needs. Um, over time, it became extremely difficult to do that, and uh, so we, and the, and the stuff that we continued to need necessitated us to switch away. So now, we build on top of the Fedora kernel with the Relish config, um, adding our stuff on top. So we leverage the fact that Arc maintains both RHEL and Fedora configs, and we just cherry pick the Fedora configs back into the RHEL configs like we did when we were maintaining a RHEL kernel, and we just build the Fedora kernel with the RHEL config. Um, so we get ButterFS support and all this other fun stuff, like uh, Way, um, uh, Waydroid now works on CentOS Hyperscale, for example. Um, the main thing that's a blocker that keeps it in experimental is that we are still waiting for the ability to have secure boot signed kernels. Go hack old Brian Stenson if you would like secure boot for six. Yeah. Um, and this uh, is an additive to the thing we were talking about with CentOS Stream 9 where we were, we, you know, to add, add to the question, we contribute to, to CentOS Stream to make things better for us and other people. Uh, on the user space side, uh, we, because of uh, the interest we have in ButterFS, we backport some of the ancillary user space around ButterFS. So we have ButterFS props from Fedora, we have ComSize. We also have ButterFS support in the installer, so you can actually install the system uh, with ButterFS from the start. Uh, on the kernel user space side, we also backport the KPatch stack. Uh, not backport, but basically KPatch in, uh, in CentOS and in RHEL is um, nerfed in that you can only use it to apply patches that somebody else built, but you cannot use it to build your own patches, um, which makes sense for RHEL as a product, because Red Hat will build the patches for you. But in our case, we want to build our own. So we ship with that support restored from Fedora. We also, um, we have engineers at Meta that do a lot of work on KPatch upstream, uh, mostly around PGO optimization and Clang support. So we folded those changes in so we could support those. Um, we have containers. Uh, the container build pipeline is kind of crummy right now, uh, so they're not super up to date, but they do exist. Uh, we they need still work. To, yeah, no, they, the container do work. We just need to get the pipeline going again. Again, if people like OpenShift, help is appreciated. Um, live yeah. images. Yeah, so um, two minutes. Okay, so live images. We make workstation thingies with the, with desktops, the good desktop KDE, and then you also have GNOME. <laughs> um, they're available, they're installable. We actually integrate the whole stack of things, uh, including our Butterfest stuff, our kernel, the, the Anaconda that, that, that Davida mentioned earlier. You can go download them. We make them, I, we try to make them quarterly. Yes. Uh, so uh, the CentOS Stream 8 spins are phased out. CentOS Stream 10 spins are blocked on Apple. Once we have the Apple bootstrap for our tooling in place, then we can actually start making those and that'll be the real fun point. And if you're interested in live images in general, you should go to the alternative images SIG talk that Troy has. Uh, a lot of this work is done in collaboration with Alt Images and the tooling is shared. Yep. Uh, we also have Cloud Images. Which is a partnership with actually with Fedora Cloud where we, yes. we 
do all this stuff to like make the with Fedora 40. They use the Kiwi tool that we use in hyperscale to build their images for both Vagrant and cloud and containers. So we're we're also now taking that the res, the work done there and pulling it back into CentOS stream to build our cloud images. We will also probably move our container images to that because yeah, that make our life easier. Um, and yeah, so it's a thing. You can go download them. They're tagged and they're on the mirrors. Uh, we have OpenStack slash generic and Amazon EC2. Uh, we already mentioned CentOS Stream 10. You can expect to see a lot more activity around CentOS Stream 10 in the coming weeks and months. Uh, and if folks are interested in helping with that, that would definitely be appreciated. There has been an uptick of activity around the virtualization stack within Hyperscale. Uh, that is also coming from Meta because the virtualization team at Meta is working on transitioning internally built packages uh, to um, a key, key Moolie Virt and likely LibGuestFS built into the SIG, so you can expect to see more activity there as well. Uh, I believe Kimu and Livirt are already published and tagged. Yep. Uh, finally, as of uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we are members of the Linux distros mailing list. Uh, if you're not familiar with Linux distros, it is a private list uh, where distributions coordinate our own security, uh, responsible disclosure for security vulnerabilities. Uh, we felt that this would be useful because the footprint of Hyperscale has grown quite a bit and we wanted to be able to respond quickly if a vulnerability comes up in one of the backports that we ship. Coming up, uh, we would love to have a kernel for Stream 10 that is in the works. Uh, we would also love to have spin images, as Neil mentioned, that's blocked on Appel. We do would like to eventually get an updated chemo package in Appel because we think that would be generally useful, but that has kind of stalled. And finally, there is tons of more work to do around ButterFS, especially around transitional updates that we will eventually get to. Which is also why now there's a ButterFS SIG in Fedora, because we're and doing yes, all that stuff there, uh, too. There is a ButterFS SIG in Fedora. If you're interested in ButterFS and like Fedora, that is also a thing you may want to consider joining. Links, uh, the documentation is there. The matrix room is there. Uh, we have bi-weekly meetings that you are welcome to join. You don't have to be a member of the SIG to join the meetings. You're welcome to just hang out and or like lurk. Uh, we have an issue tracker, and we use the CentOS develop mailing list uh, when we need a mailing list for something. And we somehow made it on time, but I do not believe we have a ton of time for questions. We have a break after oh, this. Right. Oh, yeah. If, All right. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. All right. Let me. I'll... Are you doing mic runner? All right. I am the mic runner because I have the mic. Yeah. Is this thing on? Okay. Yes. Um, I, I know we all spoke in Matrix uh, and back at Texas Linux Fest about the integration of OpenQA mm -hmm. in hyperscale, but more broadly within the CentOS infrastructure. Um, and we started the conversation uh, with Alexandra. Um, where, where are we at currently with uh, status update on uh, OpenQA? So that's really so the, the, the cloud. That's the cloud stuff, yeah. yeah. So uh, for wider context for people that do not know, OpenQA right now, the way it works in Fedora, relies on a pool of physical machines to do the, the QA work. Uh, Meta funded. Uh, work with Collabora to make OpenQA be able to run on cloud workers, specifically on AWS, because we felt that was uh, the easiest path to expanding capacity for OpenQA. This work is done. This work was done with Fedora as the target. We still need to productionize it, but the actual enablement is done. But we can leverage the same work in CentOS. And the idea with CentOS would be that we would do this and we would make the CentOS deployment cloud, just cloud, at least to begin with. Um, the blockers here are that we do need to figure out whose account we are going to use and where. Uh, my hunch is that we can likely use the Fedora account. Um, Sean, myself, you, and Matthew Miller should probably just like quickly work this out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fine. I did talk to the Amazon people, and they seemed OK with just doing that. Um, logistically, then, somebody needs to spin it up. Uh, Adam is here, and Adam is the OpenQA expert. And I'm sure not you, other Adam. Uh, <laughs> Will and some, uh, and and I'm sure he'll he'll be able he'll be able to help us uh, with that. Um, it's just a matter of doing the work. Uh, I would love to have this. I think it would be very helpful both for Stream itself and for the six. Um, the question on the integration side then becomes: um, What kind of tests do we want to have in OpenQA versus what kind of tests do we want to have um, in the current framework? OpenQA is very well suited for tests like end-to-end -end test of the system installed, test around GUIs, test around like direct user interaction. So we will probably have to come up with some kind of policies on what are good tests to have these and good tests to have in this other system and how those interact. Any other questions? Yes. I'm just curious. Uh, I've worked in areas that have had small number of thousands of instances of Linux running. 
So when you're talking about migrating the fleet to Stream 10, how many are instances of Linux are you talking about? Uh, so at Meta, this is millions of physical machines. I can give you an actual number because lawyers, uh, <laughs> but the, or, the order is millions. Uh, mm, my plus con no, yeah, speaking just a machine. Con containers is a different kind of worms. Uh, this is just machines. Um, but like the general idea there is that we're doing qualification now. Uh, if everything goes to plan, I want to get the migration schedule put together um, by like end of September, beginning of October, get it published, get people started by November ish. Um, people at Meta do end of year planning at the end of the year so they can figure out next year we have to do all of this fucking work and then and then we will see how long i haven't planned this yet so i don't know how long this will take uh, generally this takes months obviously because it's like moving the container ship um but uh, literally literal <laughs> container yes that is. um but yeah no it is a lot of machines cool thank you everyone